as uh, Ojuang to read the judgment on uh, issue number six. Uh, one of the grounds upon which petition number four of 2000, 2017 is anchored is that the fresh election was marred by illegalities and irregularities. The petitioners cite several items under that head. Failure to conduct nominations, and gazetted and undesignated returning and presiding officers, and all illegally appointed returning and presiding officers, ballot papers with candidates whose names should not have appeared, arbitrary relocation of polling stations on election day without notice, failure to conduct a legitimate, credible, and transparent process, and lack of transparency. To support these allegations, the petitioners rely upon the supporting affidavits of Mr. Njonjo Mue and Mr. Billy Atudo, shown on the 5th of November, 2017. We have already considered some of the alleged illegalities and irregularities in detail. In particular, the issue of nominations for the fresh presidential election and the appearance of certain candidate names on the ballot paper. Our position on such issues is now quite clear. The petitioners contend that the conduct of election lacks transparency for failing to disclose the total number of voters who had turned out to vote on the 26th of October, 2017. To support this, they argue that on the 26th of October, 2017, the second respondent had intimated that the final voter turnout would be known by the close of voting at 17 hours, but that the second respondent failed to disclose the total extent of voter turnout on the 26th of October, 2017, and that thereafter the proportions kept changing from 48% to 34% and thereafter to 38%. The second and third petitioners contended that a number of returning officers and presiding officers in the election did not turn up on the date of the election, and that the election was presided over by officials who had been illegally appointed, and that any returns prepared by such officials contravened the Constitution. To support this argument, the petitioners invoke the High Court decision, Judicial Review Application Number 628 of 2017, Caleb Khalifa and Hassan Abdi against Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission, wherein the High Court had held that the appointment of returning officers and their deputies was illegal. In response to this argument, all the respondents together with the, the interested parties, by contrast, submitted that the appointment of the constituency returning officers and their deputies was quite legal and proper. The attention of this court was drawn to the fact that the issue is, subject, is a subject of a pending appeal before the Court of Appeal. It was the respondent's further contention that contrary to the petitioner's allegation, the judgment by Justice Odunga in Judicial Review number 628 of 2017, did not invalidate the appointment of the constituency returning officers or their deputies. At any rate, they submitted that the said judgment of the High Court had been stayed on the 25th of October 2017 by the Court of Appeal. From the submission of the parties, it is clear that this issue was canvassed in Judicial Review Miscellaneous Application Number 628 of 2017. Uh, and the court held, um, the court made its holding in quite a number of points which we have recorded and you will be able to read them. Upon the discovery of the said judgment, upon the delivery of the said judgment, 
The IEBC filed an application at the Court of Appeal, Civil Appeal Number 246 of 2017, seeking a stay of execution of the decision of the High Court, pending the lodging, hearing, and determination of the intended appeal. Upon, hearing, upon the hearing of the application, the Court of Appeal made the following ex parte into the orders. The impugned decision of the High Court has a potential of rendering the presidential elections slated for the 26th of October 2017 irregular, even before the elections are held, thus precipitating another election outside the stipulated 60 days and in contravention of the provisions of Article 143. For the avoidance of doubt, this order means that the constitutional and statutory functions of the returning officers and their deputies relating to the presidential elections slated for the 26th of October 2017 are not invalid, end of quote. In the above context, the petitioner's claim rests squarely upon a single case, Caliph Khalifa, which is now the subject of a pending appeal. By the High Court, by the High Court's decision, the said appointment of returning officers and their deputies had been tainted with legality, and so all such returns as emanated from such officials were in contravention of the Constitution, and consequently, the election rested. So the election result in question should be annulled by the petitioner's course. Such a contention is contested by both the respondents and the interested parties. They maintain that the appointment of the constituency returning officers and their deputies was in due compliance with the law in every respect. They urge further that the issue is sub judice, as it is the subject of future determination by the Court of Appeal, which has already ordered in the Caliph Khalifa case that the matter rests in abeyance and is to occasion no prejudice for the moment in relation to the exercise of the mandate of the said electoral officials. The respondents in advancing their standpoint have observed that Mr. Justice Odunga in the Caliph Khalifa case had not taken any action to invalidate the appointment of the said polling officials. Whereas the respondent's position represents a valid status quo and the legal status of the returning officers thus cannot be denied, this court has an obligation to set the matter to rest. The court is considering an electoral matter in which it takes the first instance and the ultimate instance. Its singular jurisdiction in the electoral matter is to be secured by holding that the current legal status of the said electoral officials carries validity for now and for the future, irrespective of such determination <coughs> as may later be made by any other court on the matter. Guided by exigency and by judicial notice, which must be taken of the reality of discharge of the assigned mandate of the electoral agency, we now hold that the officers in question lawfully held their positions and duly discharged the constitutional mandate devolving to them. This is also because on the election date, the stay orders granted by the Court of Appeal were firmly in place. And to say it otherwise would be to negate the value of the validity of court decisions unless and until they are overturned. The decision of the High Court to that extent cannot be the basis for invalidating the 26th October election. Accordingly, we find no validity in the petitioner's claim that the said returning officers and their deputies lacked authority. Um, the second and third petitioners submitted that on the 26th of October 2017, without notice or further direction to the voters, the second, 
they first responded arbitrarily, arbitrarily relocated the following polling stations. Kibra, Sharangombe Ward, KH Olympic Education Center, um, and Kibra Sarangombe, um, Kibra PAG Church School, uh, uh, those are the ones. The petitioners contended that the second respondent dishonestly claimed that an election had taken place in areas such as St. Mary's polling station within Mombasa County, when the voters did not have a real opportunity to vote, and that this showed dishonesty, especially by representing that an election took place when the majority of voters were disenfranchised. They urged that there was no fair election. In response, the first and second respondents stated that by moving the polling station, they acted within the powers provided for under Regulation 64.2 of the Elections General Regulation 2012, which allows presiding officers to transfer polling stations to another polling station or public facility. In addition, it was their submission that the notices of transfer were displayed conspicuously at the polling stations and anybody who visited the polling station would have seen them. It was, it was their submission that the move was necessitated by the fact that the polling station had been barricaded and replaced with bonfires. And this, coupled with escalating violence, made it impossible to vote at these stations. Thus, the returning officer for Kibra advised the presiding officer to move to Olympic Primary School, which was secure, and they placed notices at the entrance to the center, informing voters of the new stations. This was corroborated by the third respondent, who emphasized that the first respondent's official acted within the law, and that the transfer was necessitated by violence that had erupted in Kebra constituency. With regard to Changamwe, the first and second respondents relied upon the affidavit of the returning officer for Changamwe, Ms. Luciana Jumwa Sanzua, dated the 12th of November 2017, who averred that no polling station was set up in any ungazetted area, as there was no occurrence of events such as warranted such an action, and voting went on normally. We note that the allegations as regards to Kibra constituency have not been substantiated with any evidence showing that only two people voted at the polling station. No one has come up to say that he or she would not trace or find the polling station after it was moved. It is also admitted that the polling stations were moved as a result of violence that erupted and that the first respondent exercised the powers which are conferred on it under Regulation 64.2 of the Elections General Regulations 2012. In this regard, the allegations by the petitions are in, uh, are in generality and are not supported by any evidence, and they have been rebutted by the various uh, returning officers. The second and third petitioners submitted that at least 28% of the people who turned out to vote in the fresh election could not be identified biometrically, contrary to representations made by the second respondent that they would, they would put in place a biometric register that is secure and accurate. This, they submitted, raises doubt concerning the actual number of people who turned out to vote in the fresh election. It was submitted that the people who were identified by the Kim's kit were only 5.5 million voters and that there were about 78,000 voters who were not identified but still voted. The petition has contended that there were discrepancies between voter turnout as recorded in Forms 34A 
and as captured and recorded in the OT MOFO schemes kits, recorded records and logs in a sample of about 100 polling stations in Garissa and Muranga. It was contended that in some polling stations, the turnout gap between the Form 34A and in the Kim's kit is more than half of the total number of registered voters in that station. On behalf of the first respondent, it was submitted that for the authenticity differences with resolutions, and it all depends on how the returning officer sets it as regards the pictures produced. The Kim's kit is a standalone gadget, and no image can be transmitted in the system unless it originates from the Kim's kit. On the failure to transmit both the text results and the image of the Form 34A, it was submitted by Mr. Mahat, counsel for the first respondent, that the first, that first there was no evidence that anyone was prejudiced by the omission to transmit the text results. Secondly, upon the High Court order to include Mr. Aukot and other candidates, the company reconfiguring the Kim's kit was categorical, that having already reconfigured the kits with two candidates, it would need more time to incorporate all the candidates. However, this was not possible since the Supreme Court order for a fresh election under Article 140, sub Article 3 of the Constitution was time bound. He urged that where there is a conflict between uh, regulation and the Constitution, it must be the Constitution that takes precedence. The third respondent went through the process of Kim Skate's identification to biometrics and the complementary manual identification to the alphanumeric setting and document search using the surname or other names. This was corroborated by the first interested party who confirmed to court that the complementary identification system was working. The third respondent urged the court to find that the second respondent acted in a transparent manner by opening up his servers without being prompted immediately after the first respondent declared the third respondent as the president-elect on the 30th day of October 2017 to enable candidates and, uh, and observers to have access to information in his servers. The second and third petitioners contend that through Kura Yangu Sauti Yangu, they received and analyzed about 1167 forms 34A from its observers out of the total of 1,167 forms, 55 were not signed by agents, while 1,112 had agents. Out of this number, 1,106 forms were signed by the Jubilee Party agents only. Out of the 266 forms, 34B obtained and analyzed by KYSY from the second respondent's portal, 250 were signed only by Jubilee party agents, and only 12 were signed by Jubilee agents, as well as other party agents. Now, following this, the petitioner submitted that despite the Supreme Court's decision that the forms 34A, B, and C needed to be standardized, verifiable, accurate, and authentic, there is evidence, as outlined above, that some of the forms transmitted by the second respondents are either forgeries had mathematical errors or were altered. In response, the third respondent, on his part, submitted that the first respondent conducted elections that are free, fair, secure, and transparent, devoid of discrimination, with the full participation of the public and other stakeholders, and in a manner that is simple, verifiable, and accountable. The difficulty with the second and third petitioner submission on this issue is that not being candidates or agents, they may not really be privy to the nitty gritty of the operations of the electoral process. It is undisputed that the second respondent developed a compliance and a legal matrix to guide it 
in the transmission process. The petitioners, however, make general allegations, but without specifying in what manner transparency was not achieved and in what aspect. It is worth noting that most polling stations had agents mainly from the third respondent's party. However, save for the bare allegations made by the petitioners, we were unable to detect such serious anomalies as to demand that the election should be invalidated. The second and third petitioners urge that the second respondent did not put in place a biometric voter register that was secure and accurate, making it prone to electoral fraud. They submitted that, according to the evidence on record, at least 28% of the people who turned out to vote in the fresh election could not be identified biometrically, raising doubt as to the actual number of people who voted. It was urged that failure to use the electronic system of voter identification to identify voters was meant to misrepresent the voter turnout. In addition, that there were unexplained changes in the total number of registered voters between the 30th of June 2017 and 26th of October 2017. It was submitted that in an audit conducted by KPMG on the voters' register, only about 5,000 voters were classified as having been registered without biometric records. Yet, the first respondent claimed that there were about 1.6 million voters identified without biometrics. In the second and third petitioner's view, this was indicative of electoral fraud and breach their legitimate expectation that the ICT systems would work with a seamless complementary mechanism in cases where the Kimskit experience systems failure. They referred to the Court of Appeals decision in uh, NASA against Independent Election and Boundaries Commission Civil Appeal number 258 of 2017. It is our perception that the when raised in any election proceedings, 